What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games. And today, it seems like a pretty good day to be having a chat about a bunch of new tamers. We've got some new tamers to talk about. When we're looking at these new card videos, I like to try and theme them. I don't want to bring you three or four random cards, although I will if I have to. I like to theme them, and today's theme is, hey, look. There's a whole bunch of tamers. Shout out to the lovely folks over at DigimonCard.dev and the lovely folks over at Ensan Gaming for providing our translations here. Those dudes are all awesome. So starting off then, we can take a little bit of a look at Inoue Miyako. And I'm sorry for all these pronunciations, all right? What we got is a free cost tamer. At the start of your main phase, if you control the red Digimon, gain a memory. So, you're paying free memory, but this is one of those ones, it basically might as well say, at the beginning of your turn, gain a memory. Like, I know it's a bit more involved than that, but it's not really much more involved than that. So, this is honestly pretty straightforward. It is just a case of gain a memory at the start of your turn, cool. During your turn, when your Digimon with two or more colours attacks, you may rest this Tamer and delete one of your opponent's Digimon with 3,000 power or lower. And I love this, kind of. Because you see, this is not going to work all that often. Firstly, it's got to be two or more colours. And secondly, it's got to be a Digimon with 3,000 power or less. And there are going to be a whole bunch of times where your opponent doesn't have a Digimon with 3,000 power or less. Where they can play around and protect themselves. So basically, yeah. I'm not saying it's bad. I like the first skill. And I like the second skill in some matchups. And I like it if you can get it rolling early. But you need to be warned there are going to be times where you are attacking the two-color Digimon. And it still doesn't work. Because, actually, there's just nothing out there you can get. Oh, and then, obviously, as a security card, you play without paying. And while we're here, we might as well have a little bit of a look at Aquilamon. Because what we've got here is... Now, it's a pure red Digimon. But it can Digivolve from red or yellow. Four cost to play, two cost to Digivolve, 4,000 power. All pretty standard. But if you have a yellow Digimon in play... The cost of playing this Digimon is reduced by 1. So now it becomes a free cost to play. 4,000 power level 4. That's cheap, ladies and gentlemen. That is most definitely cheap. So this is one to absolutely keep an eye on as just a pretty cheap option before we even look at anything else. And I'm looking at it here because it clearly makes a pair with a tamer we just looked at. We also have an inheritable skill when you are attacking, if you control a yellow Digimon, delete one of your opponent's Digimon with 5,000 power or lower. And this is a little bit more like it, ladies and gentlemen, because there is a big difference between 3,000 and 5,000 power. 3,000 power, you're getting level 3s that aren't that powerful. Whereas 5,000 power, you're getting pretty much all level 3s and a pretty decent chunk of level 4s as well. And that makes a big difference. Now, obviously, you can combine this with the Tamer we just looked at. And then when you're attacking, you're actually deleting a Digimon with 5,000 power or less. And a Digimon with 3,000 power or less. Which is pretty awesome. Now, in order for that to work, if this was a dual color red and yellow, it would be awesome. Because you would control the yellow Digimon. This one. And it's a dual color, so an OA works out nicely there. But remember, if you just Digivolve this up into a mono red Digimon, then it's not going to be so good. And nowhere you must be attacking with a dual color Digimon. And Aquilamon here, you must have a yellow Digimon in play. But if you're playing a hybrid red yellow deck, this is a combination about which you could actually. You could justify getting a little bit excited. Moving over into green then, we got ourselves another new tamer. Remember, that is the theme of the video. We have got ourselves Willis. Another free cost to Digivolve tamer. All of these, by the way, have a security guard where you play them without paying the cost. We really don't need to talk about that again. But when you play it, you may hatch one Digi Egg card to an empty space in your breeding area. And on the one hand, I adore this. It's cheating. Because it allows you to do something you should not be able to do. It allows you to hatch an extra egg. 
But this is just a worse version at this stage of Mimi Tachikawa. Because, of course, Mimi Tachikawa, if you have a level 5 or higher green Digimon in play, and admittedly, that is an important thing to remember... But if you've got a level 5 or higher green Digimon in play, you can suspend it to either hatch a Digi-Egg or move a level 3 or higher Digimon out of the breeding area. I.e., if you've got a level 5 or higher green Digimon, Mimi gives you an extra breeding phase every turn. And we've had that ruling that makes Mimi genuinely, actually, literally broken, that if you hatch an egg in your breeding phase and then bring it out using Mimi Tachikawa, even though you played it this turn, because you hatched it, it doesn't count as playing. And that means you can attack with a Digimon that wasn't in play the previous turn. That's a bit nuts. This, you don't have to have a level 5 Digimon out, which is lovely. But also, it's only a play skill. And it's going to be awkward. Because if this comes out as a security card, but you've got a Digimon or a Digitama in your raising area, you can't hatch. And if this, you really want to play it, but you don't have a space in your breeding area, then you've got to play it and you miss out on this skill. So, it's not as good as Mimi. And the fact of the matter is, there are going to be times you don't have a space in your breeding area, roughly 50% of the time. And that's awkward, frankly, ladies and gentlemen. That is really awkward. But you do have another skill here. During your turn, when your Digimon evolves into a Digimon with Gargamon or Rapidmon in its name, you may suspend the Tamer to reduce the evolution cost by one. And there's the hook of the card. The first skill is nice as a lovely bonus. It doesn't make me want to play the card. It makes me go, that's kind of cool if I would be playing the card otherwise. And here is when I'm playing the card otherwise. This is Radonk. We've already seen a new Rapidmon which is coming in this set. It is a super rare. But we know there's a Gargamon. Like We've seen other references to Gargamon. We know it's coming at this stage, ladies and gentlemen. We know it is. Plus, we saw that Terriamon the other day that lets you, when you play it, look at the top five cards of your deck and add a card with Gargamon or Rapidmon in its name to your hand. And basically, there's just a bunch of support here for this evolution line. And I'm going to be 100% honest with you at this stage, ladies and gentlemen. Bring it on! This sounds good to me. This sounds fun. If you're playing that kind of deck, it's cool. Now, obviously, up to now, the amount of Rapidmon and Gargamon we've had really has been extremely muted. Essentially, up till now, we had Rapidmon and we had Gargamon in BT3. It's not a dramatic pause. That's it. And I suppose I should mention the Mega Gargamon from BT3, which is actually a card I really like and I've played in a whole bunch of decks. So you think I would have mentioned it just that little bit faster, but I mentioned it now. We're all good. And then, of course, the Rapidmon from this set. There's going to be more in this set. We've got some good support for them. And essentially, this just now becomes a card which is really easy to talk about. If you are playing a Rapidmon or Gargamon deck... This is basically an essential card that is going to keep lowering your evolution costs. And I know it takes free evolutions to pay for itself, but that's not really the way I think about it. Maybe it comes out as a security. Maybe you pay for it when you can afford it. But then every turn, you can be digivolving into Digimon that you shouldn't be able to. And that is going to put a lot of pressure on your opponent. Outside of that, I don't like it enough for the play skill. I like it as a bonus, nothing more. But if you're playing a Rapidmon or a Gargamon deck, this just became an absolute no-brainer. And then the final one we got to talk about is a card that was just revealed a few moments ago as I am recording this. It is Digimon Kaiser. A white Digimon. Apparently people were expecting purple or black. I'm sorry to disappoint you. And what we've got here is another free cost Digimon. But on all turns, when one of your opponent's level 5 or lower Digimon gets deleted, you may suspend this Tamer to draw a card. Now, maybe both you and your opponent go through an entire turn without one of their Digimon getting deleted, but that doesn't happen all that often. Which means, although not 100% reliably, this is often just going to draw you a card every turn. And Digimon is not a game with a huge amount of draw power. Draw power is pretty muted in the Digimon TCG. So if you're giving me a tamer that can sit on my bench and draw me a card every turn, yes. 
This is a card which I am going to consider in every deck moving forward. I'm not saying I'm going to play it in every deck moving forward. And do remember, it's only when a level 5 or lower is deleted, not when a level 6 or 7 is. But the fact of the matter is, draw power is hugely important. And unless I'm playing something like a Rookie Rush deck, which is just not going after my opponent's Digimon very much at all, this could be a card where, you know, if I get four of these out, and it's once per turn, but it's once per turn per copy of this, I could be drawing like four cards a turn, potentially. And it's obviously it's not going to happen very often, but there are going to be times and games where it does and this is going to be a legitimate draw engine and because you've got your turn and your opponent's turn for it to work i love it i love this as a really nice draw engine it's one of my favorite tamers straight off the bat but also on your opponent's turn when one of your opponent's level three digimon moves on the breeding area to the battle area you gain two memory now, I'm going to be honest with you here. This is super easily played around. Because what your opponent is going to do is just not bring level 3 Digimon out. Or they're going to do it because it actually sets up a nice combo where they want to play a two-cost card, but that's going to end up just not passing the turn to you, and they want to pass the turn to you with exactly one memory, so they're going to do it for that. And then they're going to do it to manipulate the memory so they can pass it to you with one memory... We all overpay occasionally to do that, and that's fine. But most of the time, what your opponent is going to do is go, ha, 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 I'm not moving my level 3 out. I'm going to wait until it evolves into a level 4. Brilliant. You're not bringing the Digimon out that you want to bring out. This is good. And I know that there are a bunch of decks where you don't bring Digimon out of the breeding area until they're ready, and it isn't going to do much against them. But the fact of the matter is, I adore this as a draw engine. You give me this as well, where I'm either gaining extra memory or making my opponent nervous to bring their Digimon out of the breeding area, and I become very happy indeed. This just became one of my very favourite tamers, along with Mimi Tachikawa. Probably my two favourite tamers now. I think this one's nuts. It might just be me... But I think this is absolutely ridiculous. I love it. But I want to know what you think. So let me know in the comment section, would you? Go nuts. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video. Subscribe to this channel. Follow me on Twitter at Lawasi. That's where we talk Digimon and a whole bunch of other card games. And please do consider checking out Patreon.com slash PTCG Radio. Where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all kinds of fun things. But by far the most important thing as always... Look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wassy Plays.